So during the peace process in 2004, we met Sivaram here in Bremen and we did an interview with him. Um, mainly the interview was on the geopolitical aspects of the Tamil struggle. Uh, one year later, uh, unfortunately, he got assassinated. And after his death, um, the war came back and uh, the Tamil struggle basically has been destroyed since then. So uh, now when you look back, uh, is there still a relevance after all these years and all the difficulties the Tamil struggle has gone through uh, to analyze what uh, Sivaram has uh, said at that time? Yes, I think it's, it's very much so. The answer is, uh, you know, if, uh, uh, it's it's very much the case that his uh, his his work uh, his writings and his actions are very relevant to what's going on here at this moment in time. You know because uh, the, you know Sevaram is the kind of person the per, uh, a person who who his writings and actions. Uh, uh, if you analyze it at, uh, at a later time, right, it means another thing to what when you an analyze it before. It's like a book you read it when you're young. It means something, but uh, several years later, it means another thing. The reason it means another thing is, of course, that you have changed, and and the the quality of the book means that it, it it has so many aspects so much depth to it that uh, the new situation um, uh, it means an, uh, a deeper meaning it means another meaning so there is in other words there's an interaction between your experience and the experience of the uh, of a person like Ritsevaram, and and the depth and the quality of his uh, life's work uh, lends itself to this kind of uh, his kind of thing, and um, you know we we talked about geopolitics. You, you when you interviewed him, um, you concentrated on geopolitics, and actually. Geopolitics is, of course, central to uh, his um, his work. Although uh, his work has many many aspects, and and I think we can concentrate on geopolitics because th this is a theme that runs. Uh, it's so relevant to us, right? I mean, he talked about many many things, you know, about the the history of the Tamil. Struggle the armed uh, um, uh, uh, sort of experience in very long past history and all these kind of things, which are all very relevant to the Tamils. But since we are engaged in uh, political work in the West, um, the, his uh, geopolitical analysis becomes very relevant now. And it means a different thing to what it meant at the time he exposed it. So could you elaborate a little bit further? You said, I mean, uh, as we we also developed our, our work and uh, now we view things maybe differently that he has written. I mean, the connecting part is the geopolitics behind, behind it because the geopolitics at that time and at this time this aspect is still there, but I mean also, I mean, well, this is the connecting, the connecting part between these two eras, basically, before the destruction and after the destruction of the struggle. So, how, how is it still relevant today, now after, after the destruction of the Tamil movement? Yeah, the, the thing is to, I mean, to, out, to outline what I understand by his uh, ge geopolitical analysis um, is is actually the it's based on the 
geographical location of the island. You know, it's the location of the island has been key. Um, this is actually not, in a certain way, it's not new. You know, it's historically from the Portuguese to the Dutch to the, the, the British to now the American era of American domination. In each of these uh, eras, uh, the situation, uh, the geographical location of the island has been uh, the source of the interest of the big powers in the island and specifically the harbour, this uh, Trincomalee harbour. And Sevaram in the, in the interview that you did uh, at that time, uh, he, he actually um, used a map to show the location, you know, and this kind of thing was extremely powerful uh, to show uh, in, in a visual way how the placement of the island and the harbour is uh, crucial to its importance. It's also important um, uh, apart from the location in terms of space, if you like, also in terms of time, uh, because uh, the 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 uh, he was talking about the Iraq War and 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 the relevance of the Iraq War uh, to the interests of the Americans in Trincomalee Harbor. He 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 connected the two things, and and it's uh, so historically uh, the interests of the Middle East and the uh, and the interests of the Americans in Trincomalee Harbour are interlinked. But also, in terms of the future, uh, uh, the American interests in the in the, uh, the Pacific and 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 the tensions that are emerging now in the Pacific. So, for the future too, a uh, Trincomalee becomes extremely important. So. So in, in terms of uh, the historical process and in terms of geography, for, for both those reasons, the harbour becomes extremely important. That is the, uh, the reason why, why especially the, the Americans and to another extent the UK also, as they are normally following the policy of the Americans, is so interested in this island, you know. So in in this equation, how how do the Tamils fit into that? I mean, because the harbor is there. I mean, the Americans could could have the harbor. Maybe some people might even some Tamils might even think that mm -hmm. uh, if if the Tamils get something out of it as well. Yeah. So I mean, if it's just about the harbour, hmm. why was uh, were the Americans so interested in destroying the, the, Tamil, the Tamil movement and uh, even beyond uh, keeping the, the Tamils down? Yeah, I mean, the, the, the thing about the harbour and the Tamil people is that the, the the development of the Elam struggle, the power of the Elam struggle. This, this provided a, 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 an alternative kind of uh, uh, use for the harbour in, in the sense or the ability for the people, I mean the Elam Tamils, to say no to any external power using the harbour for military means, right? And, and uh, it's the, it's the uh, independence struggle, uh, the power of the independence struggle uh, is what, uh, and the, the sovereignty of the independence and the assertion by the independence struggle that uh, this will be a zone of peace. It's this assertion uh, uh, by the LTT basically is what uh, um, sort of uh, is what made the response of the Americans. You know, this is what made the Americans so d d determined to wipe out uh, the Tamil 
sovereignty because without uh, if you are not able to completely wipe out even the slightest hint of uh, the Tamils have ha, having the independent ability to control especially Trincomalee Harbour uh, then uh, um, uh, uh, they won't be able to use this place at will you know it, it it doesn't necessarily mean the Americans have to come there with all their ships and have a have have a base it, this is not the way uh, modern warfare works yeah it's all about uh, right, f right, flexibility and having the options to use certain places at certain times when they need it, right? And the Americans, uh, by uh, right, uh, uh, making the agreement with Rajapaksa in 2007, the access and cross servicing agreement, uh, meant that they ensured that the Sri Lankan state, the 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 unitary state of Sri Lanka and dominated by the Sinhalese will be able to overpower any kind of resistance that comes from the Tamil side. And so, um, so the, I mean, you say that this is, uh, well, it's a question of sovereignty, of course, for the Tamils, <coughs> but uh, above that, I mean, beyond that, is it, uh, I mean, where does this, does this also come from their own experience of of war, basically, that they uh, say our our land cannot be used for for this purpose. It's not. It's beyond this uh, this sovereignty uh, the, that aspect, uh, because it will be basically uh, they, the Tamil people, have faced a war over several decades, mm -hmm. and uh, so of course there's there's um, morally. I mean, they know that uh, they 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 know what it means mm -hmm. for themselves. So mm -hmm. I mean, it's also <coughs> uh, going beyond that, isn't beyond the sovereignty aspect. It's I mean, if you cannot use it, you cannot be uh, become complicit in the killing and, and the destruction of other people's lands. Yeah? Yes, yeah. I mean, this is uh, the 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 Tamil struggle. I mean, uh, pra Prabhakaran and the Tamil struggle have. All always expose this thing that you know we are not cheating anybody we don't want to, ch to cheat anybody so we don't expect anybody to cheat us right we don't allow anybody to cheat us so the 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 the, the ethical aspect of the Tamil struggle you know which is expressed in many many ways uh, especially in this in this in the social uh, advances that the Tamils have made. I mean, the ethical aspect, the, the humanitarian ethical impulse that is underneath the Tamil struggle, uh, you know, it, it means nothing if you allow uh, a, a big nation to use your land in order to oppress another. I mean, the Tamil people have always said, right, uh, that uh, this, the Sinhalese have 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 resisted always the the Sinhalese oppressing them right uh, so so they you know it will be hypocritical of them uh, and and there, there will be a it will be not possible to maintain this ethical uh, uh, st stand internally if you allow an external power to use this valuable harbor to attack another nation, whether it's India, whether it's Iraq, whether it's China, wherever, right? I'm, because I'm saying this because, I mean, from especially in the West and the left, I mean, the LTT was not really known for being, uh, having a, some, some internationalist rhetoric or mm -hmm. doing things on that level. Mm -hmm. But I mean, basically, it's reflected uh, reflected in a practical way yeah. in in the struggle itself. Yeah. If you, I mean, in the way the LTT maneuvered mm. uh, with uh, in the international arena, basically, mm. in uh, choosing partners or or keeping up this uh, ethical high standard. Yeah, mm. yeah, this is right. I mean, 
uh, of course, in the West, you know, in the the, the propaganda, the LTTs mm. demonized as being inhuman. In fact, you know, ironically, you know, but in fact, you know, it is it is pr precisely this ethical component that even a very small nation could actually withstand the power projection from the largest nations in the world. Uh, this is what was the, the, I mean, essence of the Tamil struggle, you know, be able to withstand this because they had uh, during, the, before the peace process, they have fought the, the government of Sri Lanka uh, uh, to a standstill, you know, so so they they were able to internally to I mean to to, uh, to, to resist the the military attacks of of a, a much stronger regime, right? But uh, the main issue then came, especially during the peace process. Uh, whether the LTT is able to stand up to the pressures from the international community uh, because the internal aspect of it in terms of military power they had answered that question they have expressed that they, are, they were equal to the government of Sri Lanka right and everything they had to throw at them so during the post process the whole thing was moved on to another stage and and Sivaram really uh, address this issue in a way i mean in in terms of his life if you like if you look at uh, uh, professor whitaker's book and if you just go through the ch chapter headings there's one one chapter which says uh, from essa to taraki right that is when he was involved in the uh, in a right, guerrilla movement uh, to becoming a writer, right? Uh, that transition. And the next chapter says from Taraki to the Tamil Net, right? And this actually, this tra trajectory corresponds to history also, right? Uh, him, him, him moving from Taraki, that's a writer uh, based in Sri Lanka, right? To the Tamil net, right? Show uh, you know it, it goes p parallel with the uh, with the emergence of the peace process, if you like. Although he went into the Tamil net earlier than that, it's a precursor to the peace process, and his 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 trajectory uh, corresponds to the the political space moving into the international domain the peace process was a place uh, was a stage where where the 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 politics of the tamil struggle at last leads uh, reached the international stage right so i mean if i remember it right uh, tamil net really as we know it now started in 1997 or something like that yeah so uh, that was also uh, an important time internationally because things changed massively the, um, in terms of globalization, in terms of different concepts emerging also to the to the to the American concept of uh, of military domination. Basically, it started at that time mm -hmm. with basically not immediately when the peace process emerged, but at that time in the West already people came. Uh, especially in Europe, people came together mm -hmm. to uh, to to uh, uh, to work on different aspects of uh, peace building and uh, conflict resolution, and uh, this corresponds basically with Sivaram moving also to the well to move to the international arena with this work. Yeah, I mean yes. to move to the to the West with the Tamil Net. Yeah? Yes, and, uh, exactly. Yeah, that that is exactly right. And also, in a way, when when I say that we uh, we we learn new things as time time passes, you know, you know, unfortunately, you know, the lessons of uh, tragic events, you know, uh, the lessons are learned after the event, you know, 
the consciousness comes after the disaster. It, it's always like that, you know, actually Karl Marx said that, right? The, the consciousness unfortunately comes afterwards, you know? And, and this is the case for Sivaram too. I mean, right, in our experience, I mean, I remember when Sivaram was here, he was staying in our flat. He, he asked me one day, like, why are you he, here? You know, you're, you're wasting your abilities here in, in the West. Why don't you come to Sri Lanka? This was at the time of the peace process. So it was a very important time in Sri Lanka, obviously. Right? And I tr tried to explain to him why actually it's important to also stay, uh, st st stay in the West and, and do something. And this was a, it's a decision we had made collectively that I stay outside from the, the side of the singular progressives, that I should stay so that other people can stay inside and, you know, all this kind of explanation. But what I can see now is, you know, uh, you know, because at the same time I was asking him in, in, in part of these interviews we had in that time, I asked him, why are you going back, you know, because while he was here, right, one of his very close friends, journalist, he was killed while he was in, I was just interviewing him and it happened in between the interview, in the middle of the interview, his, uh, his, his, his friend was killed, right? So I asked him, you know, is it a bit stupid to go back? You know, I asked him in that way, in, in those words, right? And he immediately responded, yes, well, it may be stupid, you know, but it, it may look stupid. But the thing is, this is exactly what they want to do. They want to remove the, the political space inside the island, right? So that people are afraid and they flee, right? So he was emphasizing the political space inside the island, right? I was emphasizing the political space outside the island, right? Basically, right? At, and he was saying, it's important for me to come back to Sri Lanka. And I was saying he should come here, right? Actually, uh, 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 both of us were right at the same time, right? Uh, me and other people, maybe our friends, uh, German friends, Sinhalese friends who are here, right? We should have gone over there with our experience as well, to go over there, to engage in things there, right? Uh, and uh, because we, we, we would be more safe because of the connection we have to the West, right? And at the same time, he, with this, uh, uh, he should have been here, right? In that way, his life would be saved. And at the same time, he would be able to open up the political space here in the West. And, and during the peace process, this was, in, in my view, it was a critical component to the breakdown of the peace process. The, the, the inability for us here in the West to expand the political space. Can you, um, we also anal analyze the differences, the different, because there had been several peace processes as well. Yeah? So, uh, and all of them failed except the last one also broke down, but it was the most promising one mm -hmm. because there was a difference. And you said it, the difference is that it opened up the political space in the West also. So yeah. before that, the, the movement was able to, to fight the singer, the Sri Lankan forces to a standstill. And there, were, there was a political space to conduct peace talks on the island also. Uh, but the, the, the main difference is with the last peace talks that there was a political space in the West and the Western, mainly Germany and the EU were, were empowered to move into the peace process and to, as a different uh, option to, give, to have it another, to have a, a peaceful option, peaceful mm -hmm. solution. So this, is a <coughs> this space wasn't really utilized to the maximum which was basically also not a result of the of the of the movement which allowed the people in the west to use it but it wasn't used properly as you say yeah, yeah? yeah. yes i mean the 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 advantages uh, you know 
simply put, uh, the, 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 the military equilibrium that the, uh, the liberation movement had fought for and won, right, enabled the peace process and enabled, opened up the possibility for countries like Germany to try to push the peace paradigm because they were not interested in war and to make, make the Sri Lankan peace process an example for their overall world uh, uh, political objective for the world, you know. Uh, they wanted a peaceful world because they were economically more productive and more, more efficient, uh, whereas the Americans and the, the British wanted uh, to dominate through military force, expansion, uh, uh, subjugation of peoples all over the world. You know, so these two paradigms clashed and it allowed the possibility uh, uh, the f for this peace paradigm to come into force was allowed by the LTT basically. LTT allowed this to happen, right? So, so when this, uh, uh, this, hap this peace process started, right? it opened up a massive scale possibility, right, for the, the political space to be massively expanded, you know, hugely expanded. And this is what I'm saying, what, what Sivaram's uh, sort of emphasis on the political space is, is, uh, is so important for uh, the politics also now. Because uh, the problem was, right, even though Sivaram emphasized the right thing, he emphasized the importance of political space, he, he didn't uh, emphasize the political space in the West specifically. And he didn't uh, say specifically that uh, 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 this is a, a, the key element at this moment in time, right? Because, uh, and our fault, our, our huge mistake, you know, was that we did not convince him that he, he, he should understand that the political space here is so important for the, the continuation of the peace process. And therefore, he should come here to develop this. Like he, he, he was already doing it, you know from moving from Tarake to the Tamil net is that trajectory, right? We should have made, he, he had ideas as well, he discussed with us even and with others, right? With the Tamil net as well, I'm sure. Uh, he, he discussed the t t television channel, for example, right? Now this was the trajectory. If he was there, if he was able to organize a television channel, like Al Jazeera or something, you know. I'm not saying with the politics of Al Jazeera, but <laughs> like that, uh, uh, an alternative thing for the Tamils, you know. This would have rapid, massively expanded uh, the uh, the possibilities, right? And it is exactly for that reason that he was the first to go. He was the first to be eliminated before the peace process actually broke down. I mean, when you say, I mean, <coughs> he was the key person also, I mean, he was elim eliminated first because he was, had the ability to move into this political space that existed in the West. Yeah? And also the political space in the West was the first thing that was also closed. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, the decisions, I mean, the, the battleground was first in the in the West, in the political space, between the different powers, the different, who had different, uh, different concepts, basically, mm -hmm. about solving the, uh, the, the war yeah, in yeah. Sri Lanka. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so this is uh, uh, the, the, the thing, what I'm saying we can, we can learn from is, uh, this, this, um, uh, 
my my sort of uh, assertion or my explanation why the the power balance in the west is so important for for the tamil struggle right it applies even now you know it, it's not only at that time it also applies now because uh, uh, the 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 tra- trajectory of everything that is going on in sri lanka including the tamil people's response to the government of sri lanka is all coordinated orchestrated it appears that it's coordinated orchestrated according to the needs and the 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 agenda and the architecture that is put forward by the us and the british right and and this is based on two things which they always had from hundreds of years ago the the british had this that is the to preserve the unitary state with singhala ascendancy so a singhalis uh, supremacist uh, unitary state which is able to control all parts of the island especially uh, the north and east and trincomalee harbor right this is a precondition for everything right so the americans and the british want this and therefore they don't want any kind of uh, possibility for the tamils to move away from the unitary state right and everything that the americans and the the british are doing after mullivaikal is exactly according to this plan right and and to erase the tamil elam idea completely tamil autonomy tamil uh, um right to self determination and even the word tamil to be uh, restricted right in in so far as it does not go outside the limits of the sri lankan unitary state right so all these things are done from the west actually whether or not the singhalis want it this is the important thing right it's independent of the, if the singhalis uh, uh, falter right in in this project that are pushed forward that by the americans and the british they will uh, put the necessary pressure to alter it right so in every if state the, if all the decisions are basically taken in the west and in in the uk and the us so i mean there's a, there's a huge tamil diaspora community in the west so what would be their responsibility for the future because it seems on the island itself uh, the tamils have uh, not so much power to do anything and anyway it seems like the tamils in the west would be exactly at the right place to to intervene yeah but the thing is the tamils in the west are under the same pressure as the tamils in the uh, in tamil i mean the homeland the tamils in the west is also under uh, its systematic pressure right uh, uh, not to and uh, not to sort of uh, uh, ha- to expand the political space here in a way to uh, to push back the pressure from the US and the UK right uh, the in fact right the the UK and the US policy right has been right especially in in in, in the United Nations Human Rights Council right is try to engage with the Tamil people right to to uh, to incorporate them in the plans and the resolutions that were designed by the UK and the US right so the, the biggest enemy of the Tamil people are also orchestrating 
you know, appearing to be the only possible savior of the Tamil people, you know. So the people who are orchestrating the, the genocidal process put them forward as the only possible red savior of the Tamil people, right? So, so, if, so if the diaspora leadership or the diaspora, whether they uh, uh, explicitly or implicitly accept the logic of this, right? Then they become the, the enemies of any possibility of sovereignty within the island. You know, they become the enemies too. And this is the big pressure. So uh, because the, the Tamil people here are not facing the oppression that the Tamil people in the homeland are facing, you know, because the lifestyle is different, the lifestyle is better, and it, it the, the 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 plan of uh, uh, the the Western powers led by the U.S. and the U.K. is to is to make Tamil people sort of uh, uh, believe, right, that there's a there's a, there's a possibility for them to. Uh, in a humanitarian way, right, support their brothers and sisters at the same time as maintain all the possibilities, the economic possibilities that are available to them. So they think it's very easy, so it's possible for them to get them onto their side, right? And, and what we are saying is, well, our work has been in the spirit of right, Sivaram's uh, exposition of the political space, right, is that uh, we we want to open up an alternative political space in the international domain, and that's why we have been to Ecuador and t to Latin American countries because they have they have an experience of opposing the American plan. You know they know what the Americans are doing, and we are very, we have been quite s successful in, in for example, Ecuador, and we will expand it to other Latin American countries in an uncompromising way, right? And and because uh, to have to have a political space, you have to have power also, right? We have to have people who have common interest with you, and who have common ethical. Uh, uh, policies to you. They are doing it not in an opportunist way, but there's a common a, a, a bond of internationalism, right? And they have a certain degree of power as well, right? And that is where we are going. And we will we will go instead of going to the the British Parliament, right? We will go we will go to Ireland, right? Instead of going to the Americans. Uh, meeting with the American government, we will go to Latin America, right? So, and instead of going to uh, inside the UN, instead of right, f focusing on uh, the US and the UK, who are most engaged in the in in the question of Sri Lanka, we go to people, right, who were engaged in the peace process, who who push forward parity of status between the Sinhalese and the Tamils, right? Who did not want one side to be demonized and the other side to be armed, right? We will locate these people, right? Who, who, who oppose the breakdown of the peace process, right? So in that way, we will try to, to painstakingly rebuild the political states that was lost when the peace process broke down, right? And that is where right, right, Sivaram's uh, trajectory, right? We want to try to continue the trajectory of right, Sivaram, you know, from SR to Taraki, from Taraki to Tamil Net, from Tamil Net to further, right? We, we move forward to expand the political space where and to open up a front against 
the international enemies of the of the Tamil Elam people, right? The, the international enemies. I emphasize the international enemies because they are the most powerful enemies of the Tamil people. I mean, in, when we when we talked about uh, <clears throat> the zone of peace and uh, the, the Tamil movement, the, the, the LTT also making an ethical stand, basically also as a, it's an international practical uh, action. I mean, yeah. not to opportunistically make alliances, which maybe they could believe increases their, their power, mm -hmm. but rather than uh, uh, relying on their own power and, uh, and at the expense of their power, keeping up the ethical uh, aspect of the struggle mm -hmm. so i mean now that uh, that the, the the military and the political power is uh, is basically destroyed i mean the way you described it would be to uphold exactly this ethical component this is what the tamils have to connect with other with other people yeah and mm -hmm. uh, whereas maybe some people uh, even within the tamil community might believe that uh, you you have to go where the where the where the power lies, mm -hmm. on the expense of the ethical aspect of the of the struggle. Yeah? Exactly. This is the difference. Yeah? This is the difference, and 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 the Tamil uh, people, you know, the the idea, you know, also something that also always Rich Sivaram emphasized was this. Um, the the this kind of the coercive method of counterinsurgency and the pressure on the people the population itself right the the to hurt the population so hard right uh, that they they give up their ideas to give up the ideas that they fought for now this was done before the Mullivaikal, you know, this was the whole whole spirit of the attack on 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 the Tamil Elam struggle, which ended in Mullivaikal, right? And as a result, the people were uh, pushed so hard, the, right, that uh, right, physically and uh, spiritually, they were put in a position, right, where uh, they they are sort of like the pressure is such that they are forced to accept, right, that uh, their ideals are impossible to implement anymore. You know that it's just hopeless, right? So, so it's that pressure is still in action in 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 Tamililam, and and the existence of the kind of uh, the freedoms that existed, especially for the women. Right, the freedoms that existed in the Vanni at the height of the, you know, during the peace process, when they were able to freely, uh, to 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 politically mobilize and ch change the structure of the society, you know, uh, all these things that were achieved, right? Uh, now it's being it's being reversed. You know, all these processes are reversed. And even the memory of it, you know, it hurts people to think about it. You know, if you think, if you think, oh, what we had before, and then it's like a dream. You think, oh, it's an in, in, um, uh, unachievable dream. So the past, what happened in 2004, 2005, 2006, right? All these things are like an impossible dream. Right for the Tamils, you cannot. People are saying it's not possible to. It's another. It's another road altogether. We we have to travel. Right. We cannot go back. And people are forced to forget it because if you if you remember it, it it's uh, it's it's filled with pain because this sort of the uh, the great achievements and then you see the destruction. So it's all like. Trauma. It's traumatized your your uh, your um, uh, the, your dreams and your 
wishes, what you had before, to achieve it again, people are saying, if you try it again, you get the same, same treatment, right? So best to forget about it. Just forget about it completely. And, well, in the diaspora, we don't have this kind of pressure, right? So it's possible to try to re reconstruct this thing, right? At least in the mind, to, to, to reconstruct these achievements, uh, the, the, the social, the progressive achievements of the Tamils, right? Instead of here, right? Uh, um, uh, right? Uh, 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 accepting the the worst right social um, um, aspects of the past from the Tamils you know the, the feudalistic aspects and the worst of the Western society right instead of the diaspora doing these two things you know the worst of the Tam the old Tamil society and the worst of the Western society to try to aspire to the to the incredible achievements that were there in the one during the peace process and to recreate it and not to forget it yeah uh, so so we are also trying to as a as a guideline for the future to to uh, to sort of um, what, what do you call it reconstruct it right because it's 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 destroyed it's even the books and the magazines and the ideas are all thrown away. So when, when we talk about genocide, yeah. can we talk about this aspect also in that context maybe? Because when we talk about the Tamil, I mean everybody's saying it's a genocide of the Tamils, but who was, was it, what was the Tamil society that was exactly under attack? Yeah? Yeah. It was the Tamil Elam society it, yeah. which had this Tamil Elam identity. Yeah. And this identity was present uh, in the Vani, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And it was uh, that society that was being eliminated. Yeah. 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 So when we talk about genocide, and we, if, when we want to prevent it from uh, being uh, accomplished uh, or, or well, finished, uh, then uh, are, are this aspect to, to recover this, uh, 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 well, to this achievements yeah. also part of fighting the genocide. Yes, absolutely, and and you know the, the, that's also what right Sivaram also you know indicates this in many ways. You know, that's why he wanted to go back all the time to the east, to the north where he you know the east where he was born and all this. He wanted to go back because he knew that was where the source of it was, right? That was where it was sweet, you know, that smelled sweet for him, right? And he, he wanted that. And that's right. And wh whereas uh, um, he, here what is happening is that uh, uh, the, because of the social conditions that exist in the West, in the diaspora community, it becomes very hard for them to connect with the, the social achievements for the Elam Tamils. Because obviously in Tamil Elam, 30 years or so of intense struggle, right, has uh, and people having to be forced to come together and to discuss and to work out the way forward all the time, right? And out of this, the social achievements have resulted, right? In the West, the situation is completely different for the diaspora. It's a completely different kind of society. So how is it possible for, for the Tamil people in the diaspora even to, uh, to, to quantify or to understand or to, to reproduce the achievements of the Elam Tamils? It's actually very difficult to do so because it's against their material interests almost, right? So this is, this is the problem and this is also why uh, the, the, when the liberation movement existed, they were hesitant to give political power too much 
leadership political power to the diaspora because they knew that they were under completely different social and economic pressures right and and they will not uh, it's hard to to connect the two things right but because the tamil elam people are so much under pressure now right there's massive responsibility for the diaspora to try to do this impossible thing you know try to recreate or to to sort of um, encapsulate at least in words or at, at least to reconstruct the image of it you know a, a virtual kind of existence of what happened in for the elam tamils you know so, so i mean uh, and in, in that sense i mean can be uh, Sivram also some kind of example because he as a person also had a certain kind of uh, well attitude and character that might be also inspiring he was i mean not known to to uh, well to 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 respect all this old traditional uh, what do you say i mean well this old tamil traditions uh, Whereas also he he didn't uh, looked up to the to any kind of uh, uh, authority basically. Whereas when you look at the Tamil diaspora here, and I mean it seems to be they they go backward when it comes to their own tradition. Mm -hmm. Whereas at the same time also, when they try to engage politically, uh, they uh, they look up to to the. To the white man, basically, mm -hmm. to yeah. the, the when they go, the, when they meet the, the the MPs or they look for for, for political support, there it's not on a, I mean, on an equal level. Yeah, you know? exactly. Yes, Sivaram had this sort of he he, uh, you know, uh, you know, it's it's not a, you know, it's Sivaram never put himself as a standard for for morality or ethics or anything like that you know he always said you know uh, if people accuse me of being a tiger you know should see what kind of tiger i am you know in my personal life you know there's many faults i have many faults but but that that is not the point you know that is to miss the point about what sevram is you know he he did not uh, you know he's a He's he's also uh, 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 you know he he expanded uh, he he sort of uh, pushed forward the boundaries that were opened up by the Tamil struggle. It's a Tamil struggle who opened up all the boundaries, right? He occupied these boundaries when he came to the Tamil net. He came to the West. In the West, he was able to deal with the Western. Politics with the same ease that he was able to deal with, say, Karuna or somebody in 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 the Tamil struggle, with effortless ease, because he 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 knew all the arguments, he he knew all the all, all, all the pressures that are put by the Western society. He understood these things, so therefore he was um, he. The thing about him was that he didn't, uh, although he had personal weaknesses, right? He didn't make the personal weaknesses into to political weaknesses. He was able to separate the two things, and politically he was able to withstand all the pressures, right? And and that is why he had to be eliminated because he knew both worlds equally well he knew the tamil society and which way the tamil society has to go forward socially and he knew the western society right and he was not going to fall into any traps that the west put forward so he he uh, yeah so that's why he had to be the first to go because he was able to bridge the political space within the island and outside the island he was able to make the the bridge he started to make the bridge but before he was able to complete it or to move forward to another level which in in my opinion only he could have done right only he could have done this is the other thing people don't appreciate you know 
only he could have done you know a tamil version of al jazeera proper tamil net type of spirit kind of thing that kind of massive thing only he could have done let's face it right only he could have done. and that is why he was killed right that is why he was killed whoever killed him right uh uh the the benefit was got by the people who wanted to destroy this you know the, the, that's what it is we cannot i don't know who we don't know who killed them you know Pe- people don't know these things you know you you cannot f- find out because it's hidden so well right but uh, who has who has the interest to kill him you know and and it it's the people who have the, you have to understand who has the interest to kill them that that is the important thing not not exactly which person who actually killed him right and and we are also responsible in many ways for his for his uh, elimination because as i said we were not able to uh, you know the 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 power balance here and the possibilities here we were not able to convince him fast enough for him to come here you know so so we are also implicated in his extermination because you know this is the way the world is you know we have to all take responsibility we had a chance he came and you know he he was so so um, intellectually sharp he was able to ask exactly the right question he said priraj why don't you come back to sri lanka now right why are you here and i i said why why don't you come here and save your life you know but instead of saying save your life i should have said to expand the political space here right to convince you know uh so if i had known what happened after in mulivaikal at that time i would have convinced him for sure right but that's not the way it is and then i would have been able to convince him look not to save your life right but to to stop the genocide you have to be here right and i wasn't able to explain that so we are all you know we are all implicated in that way so well i mean what do you think what would be uh, sivaram's advice then i mean now what i mean you explain you went already a little bit into our, our politics but i mean uh, just to summarize it again at the end in this in this period now i mean you you started with saying well at the beginning i mean well when you read a book you mm. and you you look at it again 10 years later well the way you look at it is different so so how is it now when you look at it now what would would be the way he would promote he 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 would be completely uh he he would really be be laughing at the uh, whole sort of um extravaganza that goes every year in 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 the united nations you know he would uh, ridicule the fact that these these resolutions that the americans and and the british have put uh, emphasizes the unitary state uh, and doesn't even have the word tamil in it you know uh, he he will ridicule the tamil people for following this you know as if it's a great thing you know trying to to go after this and and he he would uh, he would emphasize the, the 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 importance of the external powers i think you know this is what he al- al- always said he would emphasize the the, uh, the external powers and he would uh, he he would emphasize a real connection between the diaspora and the elam tamils you know a real connection you know and the social the the, the social values being 
sort of exported from the uh, from from the Elam Tamils from the period of the peace process, you know, exported here, and uh, and the and the 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 possibilities to oppose the Western agenda, right? The ideas how to export, the, you know, if the people in the diaspora is able to uh, to effectively stand against the external pressures on on the Elam Tamils, the negative expert, uh, you know, that will s strengthen the hand of the Elam Tamils in the homeland, you know. And that is the conditions under which the ideas can exchange in a in a in a solidarity way, right? If you if if you cannot achieve something here, if you cannot push back here, right, right, then then you have no right to give a, uh, any advice to anybody there, right? And if you can't in in the homeland, if you cannot, right. Uh, respect the achievements of the of the movement right if, if you can't uh, try to maintain or to uh, to reconstruct the achievements right then you have actually n no right even to ask for support from the from the diaspora you know it both have to you know the reference has to be the achievements of the Elam Tamils, you know, in, in during the peace process, when they had, when they had the political space, you know, and right, Sivaram actually said it, you know, when, when, when he was um, he was speaking to uh, Mr. Whitaker, Professor Whitaker, I should say, <laughs> uh, and you know, uh, he he. Uh, he, he was saying this thing about the political space. He was trying to explain to 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 to, to, to Professor Whitaker, and he was in a, a kind of a restaurant type of thing uh, in the Peace Secretariat, I think, in 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 the Vanni, right? And and he 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 said, this table, this building, this is the political space. This is what it is. And, he, and Professor, what what do you mean? You know, because after winning the possibility to have peace, right? The peace secretariat building was actually built by the S S Swedish people, right? Uh, not the Swedish, the Norwegians, yeah. And and he was saying that is the the political space that was won. You know, internationally and locally. International, uh, locally in the sense of the building itself is built by an international force. But under the the, the contours, the power contours that were set by the LTT, uncompromising way, right? They have militarily, politically got this space so much so that the Norwegians have built a building in there, right? That was a political, way. but look at that building does it even exist now it's destroyed so the political space has been destroyed the international support for the political space that is also destroyed everything is destroyed right and he he would say look he he would explain these kind of things and say how important it is to rebuild the political space right and to identify who destroyed this who is the people who destroy the political space? Because the international political space cannot be destroyed by the government of Sri Lanka. It's it's ridiculous even to think about it, right? So who did it, right? Analyze it, understand it, right? At this stage, it's also a, a battle of the mind, you know? In the mind, the problems are. The mind and the, 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 the fear, basically, the fear of failure, of you know, people say, oh, you know, how how can we do something? Even the the tigers were not able to achieve it. How can we do something? Yeah, the ti ti the 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 tigers fought so hard and uncompromisingly to to preserve these ideas exactly so that other people are able to 
is to take it forward. That's why they did it. So it's ridiculous to say that the tigers are not there, therefore we cannot do it. They died because expecting you to do it, right? And the fear is, and the fear and the difficulty is it's psychological, right? This counterinsurgency strategy has worked to the extent that everybody thinks it's not possible anymore. That's what everybody is forced to believe, that it's not possible. But Sivaram will say, it is possible. He will say, carry on, we can do it. You know, it's, it's not for nothing all these things have happened. And he, his life was like that. He was, okay, he was a bit too risky, you could say. He took risks that were, some people would say, unnecessary. But he, he, he was not afraid, you know. And to be afraid is the problem. Always is a problem is fear. Fear of losing what you have, right? And, and, and it's, it's a mental problem at the end. It's, to say it's not possible, I mean, diaspora is one million people, right? What are they afraid of? What really are they afraid of? Yeah? And their uh, 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 situations arise all the time where they're able to do something, right? Uh, there was in Germany, for example, there was a court case, right? We, the diaspora was put in a position, are we going to fight? politically or are we going to allow the people who are arrested to to to, uh, to 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 get the fire for themselves and we save ourselves right you know you can if you if you did fight you would have been able to win everything in my opinion right now the same thing is going to happen in switzerland right are we going to fight or are we going to say, yeah, the 13 people who are going to face this problem, they're going to just, um, yeah, the people will say, well, actually, they, they can actually turn against those people, you know, turn against the leaders, you know. It's karuna all over again, you know, hundreds of karunas, not one, right. So do you do that? Do you f fight it openly, right? Or, you know, the question at the end is, is the Tamils the genuine liber the LTT and the Tamil struggle, is it a genuine liberation movement or is it a, a, a bunch of uh, right, fanatical t t terrorists, right? That's the way it's been put forward. And it's quite possible to explain why the character of the, the Tamil struggle. But you have to stand up and be counted. You have to say it. A few people have to say it firmly, clearly, right? And we can win it. You know, the, the political space, if you win such a court case, whether it's in Germany or whether it's in Switzerland, if you actually win it, that is the expansion of the political space for the Tamils, right? By talking about it, it's not enough. You have to actually get a, a practical victory. If Rich Sevaram was here, he would have been at the court case. He would have given evidence, brilliant evidence, right? To show that the Tamils are a liberation movement, right? And he would have actually convinced everybody because he had the flair to do it, right? Okay, we might not have the same flair as uh, Ritsevaram, but we can reproduce this, right? We cannot say, oh, Ritsevaram is not there, Prabhakaran is not there, so therefore, oh my God, you know? <laughs> is this what people fought for, yeah? Is this what people fought for? You know, <laughs> you don't have to be as good as Prabhakaran, Abhakaran or whoever, you just have to do what you can do and to, st to stand up and fight. And that's what Sivaram always did.